Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We continue our coverage of the sport with great guests. Nike hot seat is filled today with Michael Novogratz, chairman of the board of Beat the Streets, New York City, and that movement that has been so very successful. Michael, welcome back to the show. Thanks a lot, Scott. Coming up, the gala in New York City that everybody's talking about. Let's start first about the purpose of the gala. It is about fundraising after all, isn't it? You know, we have a... Uh... About 125, uh, actually more than that, our high school programs here in New York City that we fund and have started. Uh, and 80% of our fundraising usually happens around the gala. And so we have this big gala. The idea was originally, let's bring wrestling energy to a city that has none. Um, and let's bring the greats uh, and, and the lore of our sport uh, into the city so our kids can see what it is. So they can meet our stars and look at our stars and start following them. Um, and let's bring the city's energy into the sport of wrestling. Uh, we always thought that wrestling needed a jolt of jolt of New York City adrenaline. And uh, I tell you, this NCAA tournament we had, uh, we felt a great vindication. You know, it was 10 years after we started and we said, we're going to bring wrestling to New York City. And I thought, uh, you know, it wasn't all of us. There was a ton of people's fingerprints on bringing the NCAAs to uh to New York, but you know, we had beat the streets. Felt like we had some part of it, and I thought uh, it was one of the best NCA tournaments uh, I'd been to. So now we've got beat the streets. We're bringing the Iranian national team. Uh, we've got two seniors. They're seventy-four and eighty and eighty-four pounder uh, coming, and then we're going to bring four of their junior world medalists. We're going to pair them up against you know four of our best eighteen to twenty-year-olds, and so it'll be an interesting USA team. You know, you'll have a Jordan Burroughs and, and, you know, I thought we were going to have a Kyle Dake, but lo and behold, we've got a new star. Uh, and uh, on the, the junior side, we're still waiting to see how people do at the Nationals. It'll probably be the guys that win the Nationals in Las Vegas. Uh, names like Spencer Lee and Mark Hall get kicked around. But, you know, people were kicking around a lot of names last week at the Olympic trials that, that aren't standing on the top of the podium. And so, so we'll see. So Thursday, March 19th, Beat the Streets, New York City. Location again, back to Times Square. It's a special opportunity and one that doesn't come without a price tag. It's difficult at best to work with the city of New York, but you seem to have the relationships. Can you talk about that? You know, actually, the city, once you figured out who to talk to, uh, has been quite helpful in, in, in pulling this off. Um, it's not cheap always because there's a lot of moving parts. Uh but the city's pretty helpful. And it's just, you know, most people don't have the audacious DNA that our organization has tried to have. Uh, and so they want to go with the, you know, the conservative and they want to live inside the box they've been living in. And we thought, you know, let's do something a little splashier. And, uh, you know, we started on the Intrepid and we've tried Grand Central. And I have all these other ideas and I always get so much pressure. You know, Times Square is such a neat place. Uh, the photographs are spectacular. The lights are flashing. It creates energy. And there's always a nice place to go to have the after party, the gala part of the, the event, uh, in walking distance. And some of the other sites don't provide that. And so we've kind of, it's kind of become our go to spot. It's a great go to spot. And you're right. The, uh, the graphic ability of that, it just presents itself so well. Mike Novogratz, our guest today. You have others that are gala chairs. Uh, Yoshi Nakamura, uh, Jamie Dynan, who I had the pleasure of spending some time with this last weekend, a fine man and a great family, uh, Michael and, and Kira Berry, uh, Dave Berry. Uh, you, you surrounded yourself on this board, this board of directors, with some incredible people that understand the benefits of this sport and the benefits of having a great party. You know, the uh, it's expensive. It's a lot of work. Uh, you know, Kira does a lot more work these days than I do, so hats off to her. Um, you know, and so, you know, to, to, to get big things accomplished, I think you need a team. And uh, I get m much more of the credit than I probably deserve. Uh, you know, Ken Bigley, who's, you know, been behind the scenes working, uh, working for us, has done an amazing job. Uh, we've just brought on Brendan Buckley to be our new executive director. We're thrilled about that. Um, you know, and then there beat the streets in 18 other cities. Uh, the guys in Philly and in Providence and in LA, uh, are doing an, uh, an awesome job. Matter of fact, often 
Uh, I think they're doing a better job than we are in New York. Uh, they don't throw as good of a party, but you know, they're, they're, you know, the real goal of this is can we take kids and give them a wrestler's education? Uh, I've had an insight recently that I'm going to come up with a, an award for kids that do six years uh, of, of the program. And I, I haven't figured all the metrics out. I don't know how many stadium steps they're going to have to have climbed and how many push-ups they're going to have to have done and how much weight they're going to have to have cut. But I'm pretty convinced that just wrestling on a mat for six weeks doesn't make you a wrestler. That a wrestler's education uh, is a grind. And that grind teaches you grit and toughness. And those skills translate into success in life and to leadership. And so to call yourself a wrestler, I want to have some metrics, you know, and some and then I'm going to give kids a pin that I'm a wrestler. Um, not that I get to be the judge of who's a wrestler or not, but I'm going to go out to the John Smiths of the world and the Kale Sanderson's and say, well, what do you think it takes to be a wrestler? You know, what, what, what is a wrestler's education? Um, it's hard in New York City. We, we have a lot of challenges. Our kids come from, uh, you know, difficult backgrounds at best. Uh, it's tough to keep coaches. Uh, they get burned out because it's a tough job. Uh, and so, you know, it's a grind for us as well. If you shoot those responses to that question when you pose it to the John Smiths and the Kale Sandersons and the Tom Brands, I'd like to see those and put them on the 76 million homes that is the Takedown Media Television Network. I think it'd be terrific. I'd like to have everybody hear what those varying responses would be, and I'm sure that they would be varying. Michael Novogratz, our guest, uh, we're talking a bit about Beat the Streets, New York City, the big gala's coming up, and uh, you're going to want to be there, of course, Thursday, May 19th, as we uh, stop traffic, as it were, in Times Square. This event is called United in the Square this year. It's U.S. versus Iran, and I must ask you, Michael, how difficult is it to get uh, the State Department uh, of both Iran and the United States together for them to understand that this sporting opportunity perhaps some, has some far-reaching effects. You know, it's interesting. It's The concept's easy to sell, and the execution is brutal. As a matter of fact, I've got a phone call in about 30 minutes with a State Department contact to kind of continue to help uh, on, uh, on visas. Uh, because even when everyone says, oh, this is a great idea, the visa process is brutal and the, uh, you know, the U S has to do its own investigation on the applicants and, uh, you know, and so, uh, we've got our, our guy from, uh, New York city here, uh, you know, from the New York athletic club, uh, who uh, and he's, I'm going to bastardize his last name. Uh, we just call him Mo. Mo uh, Tavaklian. Yeah. Tavaklian. Yeah. He has done an amazing job for us. So this wouldn't be happening without him as our liaison with the Iranians. Uh, I went up to, to the MYIC and actually put on a singlet and wrestled with uh, some Iranian champ who beat, up on me for, who beat up on me for a little bit as kind of a, a preliminary goodwill and you know, gave him a down payment to make sure you know, all is good. And he seemed to be a very decent and honorable guy. And so uh, you know, it, it, that's the hardest part of throwing this actually is uh, getting the Iranians. Uh, the Russians usually are, are very easy to work with. Uh, the coach there has been great, but they've got they've got some coaching you know changes going on right now. They've got a, a doping scandal, and uh, they they couldn't make it. And uh, you know you don't want to do the Russians every year. Uh, the Cubans I thought were were the most fun, certainly at the after party, uh, <laughs> and I thought that was a great event uh, last year. And you know with the opening of Cuba and the opening of Iran, we thought. You know, part of this is is to to show our kids, uh, and to show, quite frankly, the adults that you know, two guys from oppo uh, opposing countries, or even at times enemy countries, can go out on the mat, beat the crap out of each other, really try everything in their power to to to, to earn victory uh, and crush their opponent, but afterwards shake his hand like a man, and then break bread and dance with them afterwards. Mm. Uh, you know, if all are our country leaders could kind of think the same way. The world would be in a better place. <laughs> is wrestling better for having beat the streets or is beat the streets better for having wrestling? I know that's kind of a double-edged sword, but is there an answer to that question? Yeah, I think, listen, there wouldn't be a beat the streets without wrestling. I think when I, you know, if we didn't use wrestling, maybe we could try to get through to these kids 
you know, by using something like the United States Marines or I love the ancient Spartan culture. Uh, there are very few warrior cultures uh, left. And, you know, crew, I guess. It, the, you know, there's nothing fun about crew. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's nothing really fun about a wrestling practice. It's a grind. You get beat up. You're doing push-ups. You push yourself to the breaking point. Uh, it's a very different sport than soccer or baseball. Uh, not that those soccer players and baseball players don't work hard. They work very hard and they're dedicated. But the, the concept of it is, is, comes from a different place. And so, yeah, I think, you know, we need wrestling uh, in our inner cities. Uh, we need, kids need wrestling. And I think a lot of parents uh, respond to that. Most parents want their kids to have a, an experience that helps transform them. Uh, not just to babysit them, not just to have fun. Uh, it go, goes beyond getting getting physically fit. And so it goes back to my, you know, we've been thinking a lot about expansion and even on the no national level, right? Uh, we've lost some wrestlers in the last two years. The, the amount of kids wrestling in the, in the country has gone down a little bit. And I was at a meeting uh, at the trials and I was like, I almost personally would rather us focus on quality than quantity. I'd want, I want kids that, actually enter wrestling to get the wrestling education. And I think it's tricky. You know, sometimes in developed parts, we start that way too early and we've got this crazy competitive seven, eight year old, you know, coaches screaming at eight year olds, which I think is completely idiotic. Uh, and so if I was the czar and I could write the rules, you'd have a, a far less competitive and more fun program up until the age of call it 12, 13, when the kid starts getting into junior high and high school, and then you turn the competition up slowly where it starts peaking in high school. Um, and that's really when the, the, the grind comes in. I don't think we should be grinding our seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds. Uh, that should be the fun part of the sport. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is one man's opinion. And well, I think there are many that actually agree with you, Michael, and uh, I think that's well put. It should be fun to the point where you do want to get real serious about it enough to have your Olympic goals and your NCAA championship goals. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Our guest, Michael Novogratz. Michael, I want to switch gears for just a moment. You were in Iowa City uh, for the Olympic team trials, well attended, some 42,000 uh, trip to turnstiles for that event. Uh, we were able to select uh, some very, very good athletes. Here's the problem. Nine of them, well, there's still work to do. Those weights have not been uh, qualified. What are your thoughts on us having to qualify this late in the process? You know, frustration. Um, in the women's, some of that was, you know, women wanted to wrestle a different weight class in the last year of Worlds, and that's their, that's their certain priority. Um, and so I... I certainly feel good that Helen Rulis is going to qualify. Uh, I think the women have a decent shot of, 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 of qualifying most of their weights. There's a couple I worry about. Uh, um, you know, on the men's side, listen, we have the Pan Am Games as a qualifier, and that should be our, our easiest qualifier. Uh, a little bit of its luck, are you on the same side of the bracket as Cuba? <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, and is the Cuban good? I mean, Cuba is one of the best wrestling countries in the, in the world, and so – you go up against the solace and you lose, you don't qualify the weight. Um, you know, now we're going out to Mongolia. It's a long trip out there. Uh, I feel pretty good uh, about both our guys. Um, Molinero literally just looked fierce. He and, you know, I know himself. Looked, well, he doesn't have as much freestyle yet. You know, he, he looked fierce. He beat the best guys that we had to offer. Uh, and it was one of the most exciting weight classes and exciting wrestling days I've seen. Uh, certainly it was not my prediction. Uh, but you know, you talked to Cale beforehand, uh, he would have said, my guy's going to win it. Uh, one of his two guys were going to win it, <laughs> you know, right, right. <laughs> uh, cause Rutherford also looked pretty damn good. Um, listen, my heart, you know, kind of broke for, for Brent and for Logan and Jordan Oliver, who. You know, Jordan showed up. He hadn't been practicing for six and a half or seven weeks because he had had a bad shoulder. Uh, no one knew that. And, uh, you know, he was doing great against Pico and then just ran out of gas. Uh, Aaron Pico showed up and, you know, it's like the Pico, the Aaron Pico we had heard about so much, he finally arrived. Uh, it was one of the most exciting guys to watch. 
Uh, you're going to have a great future. Uh, I just would hate to have wrestled that guy. He just beats on your head the entire, the entire match. Uh, reminds me of kind of a, a little bit of a quicker Andrew Howe uh, and just the, t- the, the, the kind of brutalness that he wrestles with. And so, you know, listen, I, you know, Frank's got his, you know, he's got to qualify the weight. I think he's got the most to gain by qualifying it. And uh, I think he will. Um, Jaden Cox, you know, listen, he, he, he ran the, he ran the table. Um, and he's a heck of an athlete. He's a heck of a wrestler. Uh, I got a, a kick. It was like right in Mongolia. He, he's got to get a passport. <laughs> and so he, doesn't have, he doesn't have a lot of international experience. And so I can look at that two ways. Look how well he did against guys that have international experience. And now he's going to get four months to focus nothing but on freestyle with a lot of matches in. And so, uh, you know, I also have seen this phenomenon. Often the first time we take some of our international guys uh, overseas, no one's seen him before. They don't know what to expect. And, you know, Jake Herbert won his silver medal in the world right out of college when no one knew who he was. They didn't have time to scout him. Uh, I remember Obi Blanc in, in Moscow was on a freaking roll until he, until he got stuck. Uh, but, and so there's some advantage uh, for Jade in that no one's going to know who he is. Uh, he's powerful. He's quick. Uh, and so... I think uh, I think we'll qualify. The United States has qualified complete Olympic teams for the games in every Olympic since qualification was instituted, with the exception of 2008, that being Beijing, China. They did not qualify 74 kilos in Greco, and for 2012 in London, England, when they didn't qualify 60 kilos in Greco. Uh, so yeah, the, the challenge is out there. And as I our- don't, I, you know, Scott, I don't think we'll qualify all 18 spots. Uh, you know, we've got nine to qualify. If you, if you ask me as a betting man, I think we'll make six and we won't qualify three. Um, I listen, I'll, 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 I'll say my Hail Marys, uh, uh, that we qualify all nine. Uh, but you know, the, the global wrestling landscape is tough. Hmm. It most surely is. And you know, the, the, you're going to see it fans close up impersonal, uh, Thursday, May 19th. The location will be Times Square. One of the greatest, uh, collections of, of media giants in the world are going to have their eyes turned to the Beat the Streets exhibition of world-class wrestling matches that will take place Thursday, May 19th. Action starts at about 4 in the afternoon with the exhibition bouts. 5.30 world-class wrestling matches are scheduled to get underway. And then everybody, of course, will be hanging out dressed in all their finery for the 7.30 gala celebration. It's going to be a party. Michael, we appreciate you taking time on behalf of, of wrestling. Thank you very much for Beat the Streets New York. What a uh, what a what a blue print it's been for success and uh, what a future you're giving to these young people and i appreciate it scott thanks a ton appreciate it mike novogratz has been in the nike hot seat today we hope it's been comfortable for him it always is for us for takedown i'm scott casper thanks for watching